Hi, I'm May. Welcome to STEM Power. We are so excited to be working with you. This week, we will be learning about evolution. What is evolution? In biology, evolution is the change in characteristics of a species over time and generations and relies on the process of natural selection. The theory is based on the idea that all species are related and gradually change over time. Evolution is very complex and there is still a lot we don't know. But today, we are going to learn about some of the causes of evolution through three activities. Through evolution tag, which will help explain the evolution of species, bird beak evolution, which will help explain adaptations and how they attribute to evolution of certain species, and telephone mutation, which will help explain how mutations or changes in our genes can attribute to changes in evolution. This week's fun fact is about whales. Whales have vestigial structures or structures that don't really provide a purpose in the backs of their bodies that hint that they once had ancestors that were four-legged and lived on land. We have vestigial structures too. In our lower right abdomen, about right there, we have something called the appendix and it is attached to part of our small intestine. The appendix is a vestigial structure, which means it doesn't really provide a function to our body, but some people believe that it provides good bacteria to our gut when we need it. The first game we will be playing is called Evolution Tag. You will wander around the location and battle each other in rock, paper, scissors. You can only challenge other students of the same level. For example, if I'm an egg, I can only challenge other eggs. The winner of rock, paper, scissors evolves to the next stage. The loser stays as they are if they are an egg, but moves down a level if they are a chicken or higher. The stages are egg. When you're an egg, this, you will squat and hold both hands on top of your head so you look like an egg. The second level is chicken. The chicken, the chicken moves around on both knees and flaps your wings like this. The third level is baby dinosaur. You will move with one knee up and one knee on the ground and act like a dinosaur. The fourth level is the gorilla. You will crouch and act like a monkey. You can make noises and motions like a monkey. Finally, the last level is human. You will stand up straight and wave and act like a human. You can also say, I'm a human. The game ends when the first student stays as a human for another round of rock, paper, scissors. You can restart the game after someone wins and play multiple rounds. Good luck! So where did humans actually come from and how do we know? Today, we are called Homo sapiens, but before this, we were Homo neanderthalensis, Homo erectus, and Homo habilis. We evolved from primates and actually evolved alongside them as well. Primates are chimpanzees, apes, and gorillas. We share most of our characteristics with them. How do we know this? Well, people called paleontologists help dig up fossils or bones that are preserved underneath the ground and help analyze what these bones tell us. These bones can show us how old the organism was when it died and how it lived, as well as what it looked like on the outside. From this, we can learn more about how humans evolved, as well as other species. There continues to be many discoveries made in the field of paleontology. So maybe in the future, you could be a paleontologist as well. The next activity we will be doing is bird beak evolution. Through this, we will learn how different beaks on different birds helps them survive. You will each have two paper plates. You can scoop a cup of bird food onto one of the plates that you have. Some of you will get spoons, some of you will get forks, and some of you will get chopsticks. When the timer starts, you can use your utensils to pick up bird food and transfer it to the empty plate. These different utensils help mimic the type of bird beaks that different birds have. When the timer ends, you need to stop collecting bird food. 
The utensil with the greatest number of bird food collected wins. Discuss. Did some of you have an easier time than others collecting bird food? Why do you think this happens? What do you think this shows about bird beaks in the wild? You may have noticed that the people with spoons had an easier time than the people with chopsticks. This goes to show how different birds have different shaped beaks to help them maintain the food that they need to survive. For example, finches have cone-shaped bills that help them crack seeds and eat them. Hummingbirds have a long tubular bill that represents straws that they can use to sip nectar from, flowers. If hummingbirds had cone bills, they would not be able to get the nectar they need, and if finches had tubular bills, they would not be able to crack the seeds that they need to eat. Hawks and eagles have hooked-shaped bills that help them kill and eat their live prey. And pelicans have long beaks that have a flexible bottom that helps them catch big fish. Today's birds have the beaks that are optimal for their survival because of evolution. Over time, the species with the most efficient beaks survived the longest, and they reproduced with each other, making stronger babies. The birds with weaker beaks or beaks that were not well adapted for their food would die off and wouldn't get to pass on their genes to the next generation. This is called natural selection and helps breed a stronger and stronger species. The final activity we will be doing is called telephone mutation. You will sit in a circle and your instructor will choose one person to begin the game. The first person will whisper a phrase into the ear of the person sitting next to them. The game continues and players will whisper what they hear to their neighbors until the last person is reached. At the end, the last player will say the phrase out loud. The first person will also say what the original phrase was so people can hear how it has changed from the first whisper to the last. Please try your best to pass on what you hear and try not to change it on purpose. How does this game relate to genetic mutations? Well, DNA, also known as the code of life, helps program how each organism is. When DNA is replicated and needs to be passed on to other cells, there can sometimes be mutations or changes that aren't corrected. These changes can often cause a characteristic to be different in one organism to the next. If this mutation is harmful, this organism will die off and it will not have a chance to pass on this mutation to its offspring. However, if this mutation is helpful, for example, helps a mouse camouflage in the fields better, it can reproduce and pass on these genes and eventually, through natural selection, this trait will become more prevalent in the species than its original trait. Mutations are a big reason why there is change and why there is evolution. Without mutation, we would not have variation amongst populations. I hope you learned a lot today and I hope you had fun. Let's discuss some questions that you still have about evolution. Brainstorm with your group and decide what you still want to learn. Thank you all for staying with me today. I really enjoyed teaching you guys about evolution. Take care and I'll see you next week. Bye!